Luke 2, or Luke 1, and uh, I'd like to draw our attention especially to verse 29. It says, when Mary saw the angel, she was troubled at his saying, to cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. Quite understandable. It would be quite a shock to be an angel and get a message such as Mary got from him. So we find here that Mary was an exceptional young lady, probably a teenager, as the custom of that time. But God speaks to young people too. Last week we heard him speaking to an older man. I don't know how old Zacchaeus Zacharias was, but he referred to himself as uh, being old and aged. His wife told her. Uh, but the angel came and spoke to him in his older age as he served in the temple. Here we see him, another angel coming and speaking to young Mary. And as the state tradition says, that she was probably a teenager because they married quite young at that age. And she wasn't married yet. She was engaged to Joseph to be married. And that was uh, almost like a, a marriage commitment in those days. So she's a young person. But there was characteristics about her that God is uh, expressing through this angel. And uh, so uh, she was a blessed person, it says there. That uh, 29th uh, verse. <coughs> 28th, uh, 30th verse. The angel said, uh, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. But blessings are not always comfortable. You found that in life. Sometimes they're just not what you expect. An angel speaking was a shock to her. The ninth verse there said that uh, when she saw the angel, uh, she was troubled at his saying. She cast in her mind what manner of salutation she be. Well, the sister and angel coming to, to speak to her. It was a shock. What would she do? What was this all about? Verse 28, of course, tells us that there was good news. Thou art highly favored by the Lord. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. That's great news. That'd be great for anybody to hear. It would be good if a lot of them, you want an angel to come and speak to you. It might be too frightening, but whatever way, word come from God that uh, you're highly favored. It's nice to be popular in our society. With them. Be favored by by other people. Be highly favored. You know, if uh, people can say of you, of whoever you, you know, whichever you are, to say that, well, everybody likes that person. That person is popular. That person has talent. That, uh, a lot of people would envy that that person for their their talents or ability. Any of those expressions, you know, that would to indicate that we were highly favored among other people. We, we'd like that. I hope we're not looking for it. I hope we're not striving for it. But it's always uh, good to hear a good word about yourself. Somebody says that they appreciate something you've done. It's always good. We like to feel that people think well of you. But even more so that God thinks well of you. So what good news this was uh, for Mary, that she was highly favored by God, by the Lord. And then down in, uh, that, that's great, isn't it? And down in verse 30, it says, uh, the angel said unto her once again, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. That's even better. 
God favors us. Not only highly respected by others, not only recognized by the Lord, but uh, we found favor with Him. We like to have favor from other people. That, uh, they like to have us around. Nobody likes to be the person that's left in the corner when everybody else is having a good time chatting or visiting around, you know, doing something special. Lots of parties this time of year, and it wouldn't feel good to, you know, if everybody in a certain place where you work or uh, family or something not together for Christmas activity and left you up. You feel good about that. Nice to be included. Oh, how much more, though, to be included by God. And that's the, the great news here. Thou hast found favor with God. What great news for, for Mary. But the message might confuse. If you just stopped there, that would have been pretty nice for Mary at that particular time. But he went on to tell about the fact that she was going to have a child. And that was very confusing. Mary might have been young, but she knew enough, I guess, about life to know that uh, you just don't automatically have a child. There's a, a process, and we will go into that here. Leave that to the doctors, but uh, you all know what I mean there. But uh, yet she says here that, how can this be? Verse 34. How can this, how shall this be, seeing I know not a man? There's another indication that she was a virgin. Some, some people uh, don't want to accept the doctrine of the virgin birth, but uh, Mary did. She knew very well that it seemed impossible to her to have a child just on her own. How shall this be? And that troubled her, this news. See, this was, this was just fantastic. This wasn't the way saints were. This was even more than in the case of Zacharias. When he said, well, you know, I'm an old man. My wife's uh, stricken in years. She's older too. And how can we have a child? But at least he had the uh, example of uh, Abraham and Sarah back centuries before this, of course. But he would know that account. He would know that God performed a miracle there for Abraham and Sarah that even in their old age, they were told they're the age more that uh, Abraham was close to 100 and his wife was about 90 years old. And so that was not the time you expect to have a child. Probably even the grandchildren are growing up by that time and you're on to the great grandchildren and whatnot in most cases. Not everybody, but some. And uh, so. That was a real miracle, and, and Zacharias, I'm sure when he heard this message, his mind must have gone back to that account of Abraham and said, well, I, I can't see how this could be, but it, it was for Abraham and Sarah, so maybe it could be for us. <laughs> it was a little easy. But Mary didn't have that. There's no record. In all of history past that Mary could look back on and say, well, such and such a person had a child of their old age. This person, uh, you know, or a, a, sorry, I got back to Zachariah there. The, uh, she didn't look back and say, well, this person had a child of subversion, you know. No, it, it never happened before, and it's never happened since. And it was hard for her to believe, and nobody else would have believed it either, as we wouldn't today if somebody came with a fantastic story like that. And so Mary knew that this was so, so impossible that it that just couldn't happen, and people would know that it couldn't. 
But Mary kept listening. That's the theme of our messages, this Advent theme. Listening to God. And so Mary was listening. She, she listened to this, uh, this uh, angel and responded, not with unbelief, just with, with questions. How, how can this be? That was the difference from that time. So she had good news and bad news. We've touched on that. The good news, of course, uh, a baby to be born. Verse 31, the, uh, the uh, angel said, Behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and shalt bring forth a child, a son, and shall call his name Jesus. A detail there. He's going to have a child, going to be a son, you call his name Jesus. A wonderful name. Joshua and he, the Hebrew, and we know that Joshua had been a great leader, and there'd been others by that name. And so uh, here we're given the Greek name Jesus. That would be all this. It's always exciting when a child, somebody's going to have a baby. Usually, at least, especially young and off the first child. It's an exciting time. And they want to spread that news. Great news. Some have uh, had, you know, maybe had to wait a long time. See, we're running into that more where people uh, seem to have periods where they can't seem to have that first child, and eventually they, they do. I remember my son being quite concerned that it was quite a while before they had a child, and they were wanting one, and uh, beginning to wonder if they were going. Well, they did. Another lady that I've been dealing with at the bank uh, is uh, in that process. And she said, I think they've been married 10 years or so and trying to have a child and hadn't. And finally she did. And I, mean, I was just in there doing bank business, but she was excited to tell me that uh, she was going to have a baby. And so she was going to be off work at the beginning of the year. For this. It's exciting that somebody's having a child. That's the good news. And that this child should be an exceptional person. Verse 32 says this, He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give him unto him the throne of his father David. This is an exceptional child. Now every parent knows that their child is going to be exceptional. And grandparents especially know that any grandchild they have is going to be an exceptional child. They're just not going to be the ordinary run-of-the-mill child. They're going to be something special because they're my child or my grandchild. Well, I thought we'd maybe get some amens or something about that. <laughs> Got some smiles on both faces anyway, I know it's from. Yes, uh, that's the natural thing. But here, uh, it wasn't Mary's idea. It was the angel telling her that this was a will of God, that this was going to be a this exceptional child. Would this be the Messiah that they had been watching for for years and that every uh, young person that was looking forward to having a family would have that dream that maybe they would be the mother of the Messiah? That was the longing of the Jewish uh, women of the day. And here, this word comes to Mary that she's going to have this child, and it looks like this is uh, probably going to be the Messiah. Th those words sort of point to that, that fact. And the fact that she was highly favored in these things. Plus, a, a lot of good news. The dream of every parent to have a child, an exceptional child, you know, that their child will be something special. They all are. But, this is good news and bad news for Mary. But, for an unmarried person. And that was much more rejected in that day and age than it is today. Whether, whether pro 
progressed or gone backwards, I don't know. But we won't get into that at all at this point. But that's much for an unmarried person to have to think. Think what she would be thinking. What would Joseph think? Joseph knew that it wasn't his child. When he got the news, we'll talk more about him next week, so we won't say much here, but would he disown her? Would that be the end of their relationship? Would she be left without, uh, and then have a child to bring up on her own? And the law, although they say that by this time it wasn't being practiced, but the law said that uh, someone having a child out of bedlock, uh, not having a husband, that they would be stolen. Back in the Exodus day. Pretty serious thing. Would Mary be stoned with, because she was pregnant, because she was having a child out of wedlock? Well, we didn't know if it would really be called because they say uh, they say that that law had not been practiced in recent years there. But still, there was a thought, I'm sure. And think of the, the disgrace in the community as this word spread around that he was having this child. That's pretty bad news for a young lady to have to carry. So it's a good news or it's a bad news. And sometimes the bad news we just want to avoid. But don't Tune out what you don't want to hear. You know, sometimes we we might do that, you know. Uh, tell us know what that how easy that is when the wife says take out the garbage and didn't hear that. <laughs> or whatever it might happen to be. It's easy to tune out some of those things that we don't really want to hear. But Mary didn't do that. And that's a lesson for us. Not to tune out what we don't want to hear. Because God sometimes tells us something that we don't want to hear. Right? Amen? Amen. Sure. Sometimes. It's not always what we consider good news. We may get word from God that Maybe not an angel, but we probably don't an angel, but we get a message of God that such and such is going. There may be some illness that's coming on, and we say, well, is this just going to be minor? Is this just going to be light? And that God seems to let us know that it's going to be major. It's going to take longer. Whatever it might happen. Don't turn it out. Tune it out. Listen to God. Accept the bad and the good. Some people don't want to do that. We all want to have the good. But sometimes we have to take the bad with us. Mary listened. Mary accepted. And the great thing is that we see that she gave total commitment to this. In verse 38, Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it on to me according to thy word. The angel departed. Behold, here I am. Lord, have your way. Do whatever you like. I don't understand this. It seems impossible. It seems fantastic. I don't really like the, the implications of it all. Some of it I do and some of it I don't. I, I, I can just imagine these things going through her mind. Despite it all, she said, here I am. Lord, have your way. Oh, can you say Lord, have your way. Whether I like it or not, whether it's comfortable or not, whether it's costly or not, whatever it is involved, here I am. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. I'm here at your disposal. That's what Mary seemed to be saying. She was still listening 
that God, she still wanted to hear from God that he would die according to his accepted God's word for her, even though it didn't make sense. He said it. That was enough for Mary. Can you say that? Lord, if it's your will, here I am. Whatever it might be. And he might have some big surprises for us. Sometimes he doesn't. He doesn't always tell us ahead of time. He Ellie Mary a bit more ahead of time here, but sometimes he only tells us a little bit at a time. Not the way you find it, working with God. But as we take that one step with him, he shows us the next step to take, and the next step, and the next step. Until we follow the one, we don't get the next. So like Mary, we need to say, Lord, here am I. Have your way. Be it on to me, according to thy word, she said. Are you listening for what God said? That's just what we want to hear, for whatever he said. Do you listen to him, or only the parts that you want to hear? Let his word be my will, your will. The chorus in that little blue book we sometimes use, it says, uh, God said it, I believe it, that settles it. And I always feel with that uh, chorus that there's one line that shouldn't be in there. It should just be, God said it, that settles it. Yeah. Doesn't matter whether I believe it or not. That is the issue. Now, it's good to believe it, to believe his word, but if God said it, that's enough. That says it. And that seems to be Mary's attitude. And I trust that's our attitude. That whatever God said, whatever way he directs, whether we would have chosen it, whether we like it or not, then that says it. And we know that his way is always the best way for us. It proved that the marriage of it. He brought forth the Messiah, Jesus Christ, our Savior. We don't know what God has in store for any of us. Mm -hmm. Say with her, here I am, Lord. Do your will. And we're going to sing a song. Those sing at this time. Thank <laughs> you.